cleaning and oiling this machine is important and most people won't do it enough. We say after every three to five bobbins, clean down below and give your machine a little oil. You've got oil in your accessory pack. It is sealed so when you open this up you are going to need to stick a little pin in here and release the, <laughs> let it be open. But first thing we're going to do, right now the machine is threaded and I'm going to teach you something that will help keep the top part of your machine clean from lint. You notice there's a lot of lint that will gather up down at your foot. So if you take your spool and just pull it out the top, it will drag this thread up through the machine, pull some lint with it, and drag it up into your tension disc. So what I want you to do is I want you to take a pair of scissors, reach up to the spool, clip it at the spool, and then pull that thread, the remaining thread, out the needle. Everything comes down and out and not backwards up into your machine. We're going to take the bobbin case out, remove the bobbin, if that way, just then that way we can make sure everything's as it should be. Get a hold of your screwdriver. We're going to remove the needle more just so we don't stab ourselves, and probably to change, put a new needle in after you've done the cleaning. Use the same screwdriver to loosen the little screws and we're going to take this throat plate off. When you sew with linty fabrics, I mean everything is linty, but some are more than others. Fleeces, flannels, all that minky and cuddle, those are very linty fabrics. So I'm going to twist these little screws out and get underneath the throat plate. There's going to be lots of lint here. If you have a can of air, I want you to throw it away. Do not use that in this machine at all. You want to use your brush that came with the machine. You want to use anything that can draw it out. There's those little miniature vacuum attachments that attach to your vacuum and those will suck it all out. That's what we want. And no blowing. No blowing into your machines. What I want you to do is just take and clean the machines, pull everything out toward you. You're going to find lint in every single little crevice here. Clean it out. Next, you're going to take these two black arms and with our thumbs, we're going to push it to the side. One and two. Next, there's going to be a little cover that's going to come out. This is called the race. It has a little home where the bobbin case fits in here and at the bottom there's a little nub which will help for reassembling later down at the base. Next this little spindle in the middle is going to come on out. This is the hook. He goes back and forth half turns for every stitch. The sharp part is what catches the thread on the back of the needle and drags it and links it around the bobbin and then it goes back for the next stitch. So this is metal against metal all the time, day in, day out. And as you use um, oil and lubricate it and then you sew with linty fabrics, the linty fabrics absorbs the oil, and what you want to do is just put a little couple drops of oil around the outside. You can even just go ahead and pat it down if you want. Just you, That just kind of keeps everything where it needs to go. Now to put it back in, you're going to notice there's a hook at the bottom. There's actually a kind of a half moon in here. This is the other half of the moon. Take a time or two to kind of get that. But when it goes in, it doesn't really click, but there's only one place it fits in. Once it's in, it'll just kind of stay and hold. It's nice and smooth on the outside when they really fit nicely together. Then the race can go on top. We'll line up the nub and I just kind of slide that in there and it will fit in only one place. When it's correctly positioned, the black little hands will come back towards us and hold everything in place. You can even do a little turning to see if that is correct. And even once we get everything reassembled, take a piece of fabric and do a little sewing that is not on your, your project fabric because there's going to be a little oil that will come up with the needle and we definitely don't want that yellowing your fabric or thread. It will for about a couple sewing lengths on your fabric, it, but it will come out after oh two or three passes. So give yourself time to, to do that. I'm going to just get these screws back together. And now I actually just dropped my bobbin case on the floor. Now I have carpet in this room, but if you happen to have uh, hardwood floors or something harder yet, and that bobbin case drops and you almost wonder if it has dropped too hard. Bobbin cases can get out of rounds. So if you ever have an issue, just check and make sure nothing has bent by it dropping down. So there is benefits for carpet. That is my preference. I'm a carpet girl and it keeps me my toes warm, especially winter time. Some of you know I'm in South Dakota and yes, we have winters here. So I put in a new needle. I'm going to bring that all the way up to the top. I'm going to go find where my bobbin case rolled off to. We'll put our bobbin back in. We're going to make sure it 
goes clockwise, so we can see the, the holes spinning clockwise. Bring the thread down through the groove, down through the little arm here, and holding with our left index finger, we can go ahead and put that right on back in. And we'll go ahead and thread the machine, sew a little bit on our test fabric to make sure that everything is running. We got everything reassembled correctly and that we can sew out any of the oil that might have gotten on our thread. Little needle threader, those are wonderful. Also by using the needle threader after you put a bobbin in, make sure that you have, helps you know that you have put the, bob, uh, the needle all the way to the highest position. So we're gonna just push our threads to the back here, close up our door, put our fabric in, and a quick little stitch to see that we've done it correctly. And we've got our stitches really short, so let's make those about two and a half. There we go. Bring our take-up lever to the highest position, lift up our foot, use a little cutter on the side, and yes, everything is looking beautiful. So you wanna make sure you clean and oil your machine after every two to three bobbins to really keep this in top running condition. Then, once a year, have your, your local Bernina dealer go through and clean everything else. So a lot of moving parts that are in this machine, so you wanna make sure that they stay nice and lubricated for many years to come.